Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, today we study a very important book in the Bible as we study the gospel according to Mark, the author of Mark, according to Acts 12, chapter verse 12. Mark's mother, Mary, had a large house that was used as a meeting place for believers in Jerusalem. Peter apparently went to this house often because the servant girl recognized his voice at the gate. Acts chapter 12 verse 13 to 16. Barnabas was Mark's cousin as we see in Colossians 4 verse 10. But Peter may have been the person who led him to Christ. Peter called him Mark my son. 1 Peter 5 verse 13. It was this close association with Peter that lent apostolic authority to Mark's gospel. Since Peter was evidently Mark's primary source of information, it has been suggested that Mark was referring to himself in his account of a certain young man in Gethsemane, chapter 14, verse 51 and 52. Since all the disciples had abandoned Jesus, chapter 14, verse 50, this little incident may have been a first-hand account. Barnabas and Paul took Mary and also Barnabas and Paul took Mark along with them when they returned from Jerusalem to Antioch, Acts 12, verse 25. And again, when they left on the first missionary journey, as we see in Acts chapter 13, verse 5. However, Mark left early and returned to Jerusalem, as we see in Acts chapter 13, verse 13. When Barnabas wanted to bring Mark, on the second missionary journey. Paul's refusal led to a disagreement. The result was that Barnabas took Mark to Cyprus and Paul took Silas through Syria and Cilicia, as we see in Acts chapter 15, verse 36 and 41. Nevertheless, Paul wrote that Mark was with him during his first Roman imprisonment. As we see in Colossians 4 verse 10 and Philemon chapter 24. About 12 years later, so there must have been a reconciliation. In fact, at the end of his life, Paul sent for Mark saying, He is useful to me for ministry. As we see in 2 Timothy 4 verse 11. The early church uniformly attested that Mark wrote this gospel, Papas, Irenaeus, Clement of Alexandria and Origen are among the church fathers who affirm Marcan authorship. As we study the time of Mark, beloved, the time of Mark, many scholars believe that Mark was the first of the four gospels, but there is uncertainty over its date because of the prophecy about the destruction of the temple as we see in chapter 13 verse 2. It should be dated before AD 70, but early tradition disagree to the whether it was written before or after the martyrdom of Peter as we see in C AD 64. The probable range for this book is AD 55 to 65. Mark was evidently directed to a Roman readership and early tradition indicates that it originated in Rome. This may be why Mark omitted a number of times that would not have been meaningful to Gentiles, such as the genealogy of Christ, fulfilled prophecy, references to the law, and certain Jewish customs that are found in other Gospels. Mark interpreted Aramaic words, that is chapter 3 of 17, 5 verse 41, 7 verse 34, and 15 verse 22. 
and used a number of Latin terms in place of their Greek equivalents as we see in chapter 4 verse 21, 6 verse 27, 12 verse 14 and 42 and 15 verse 5 and 16 and 39. Now beloved, as we try to understand the Christ of Mark, the Lord is presented as active and also compassionate and also obedient servant who constantly ministers to the physical and the spiritual needs of others. Because this is the story of a servant Mark omits Jesus ancestry and birth and moves right into his busy public place. Yes, beloved, the point to note over here is Mark omits Jesus ancestry and his birth and moves right into his busy public ministry. The distinctive word of this book is ethos, translated immediately or straight away, and it appears more often in this compact gospel 42 times than in the rest of the New Testament. Christ is constantly moving towards a goal that is hidden and to almost all mark clearly shows the power and authority of this unique servant identifying him as no less than the Son of God, as we see in chapter 1, verse 1, and also 11, and also 3, verse 11, 5, verse 7, 9, verse 7, 13, verse 32, 14, verse 61, and 15, verse 39. Yes, beloved, as we are trying to understand the book of Mark from the Gospel of Mark, as we see the survey of Mark as Mark, the shortest and simplest of the four Gospels, gives a crisp and fast-moving look at the life of Christ. With few comments, Mark lets the narrative speak for itself as it tells the story of servant who constantly ministers to others through preaching, healing, teaching and ultimately his own death. Mark traces the steady building of hostility and opposition to Jesus as he resolutely moves towards the fulfillment of his early mission. Almost 40% of the gospel is devoted to a detailed account to the last of the last eight days of Jesus' life, also climaxing in his resurrection. The Lord is vividly portrayed in this book in two parts to serve and as we see from 1 to 10 to sacrifice 11 to 16. To serve, what does it mean from 1 to 10 as we see Mark passes over the birth and early years of Jesus' life and begins with the events that immediately precede the inauguration of his public ministry. His baptism by John and also his temptation by Satan, as we see in chapter 1, verse 1 to 13. The first four chapters emphasize the words of the servant, while chapters 5 to 7 ascend his works. However, between, as we see in both sections, there is a frequent alteration between Christ's message and miracles in order to reveal his person and power. Though he has come to serve others, Jesus' authority prevails only many realms. Although Jesus has already been teaching and testing his disciples, as we see in chapter 4, his ministry with them becomes more intense from this point on as he begins to prepare them for his departure. The religious also the leaders are growing more antagonistic and Christ our is only about six months away as we see in Mark chapter 8 verse 31 is the pivotal point in the gospel as the son of man speaks clearly to his disciples about his coming death and resurrection. The disciples struggle with this difficult revelation but Jesus steps head in extra 
to Jerusalem. As we see to sacrifice chapter 11 to 16, Mark allots a disappropriate, disappropriate space to the last week, yes, of the servant's redemptive ministry. During the last seven days in Jerusalem, hostility from the chief priest, scribes, elders, Pharisees, Herodians, and also the Sadducees reaches crisis proportions as Jesus publicly refutes their arguments in the temple. After his last supper with the disciples, Jesus offers to resistance to his arrest, abuse and agonizing crucifixion. His willingness to bear countless human sins is the epitome of the servanthood. Yes, beloved, as we study the outline of Mark, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, the first part is the presentation of the servant. As we see in chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, verse 12. The second part is the opposition to the servant. As we see in chapter 2, verse 13 and 8, verse 26. The third part is the instruction by the servant as we see in chapter 8 verse 27 and 10 verse 52 and as we see the resurrection, resurrection the rejection of the servant as we see in chapter 11 verse 1 and 15 verse 47 yes beloved as we try to understand the last part that is the fifth part the resurrection of the servant as we see in chapter 16 verses 1 to 20. Yes, beloved, as we study the book of Mark, the first chapter there itself we see six times the word immediately does come. Immediately the leper has been healed. Yes, the leper has been cleansed and immediately the demons are cast out. Immediately we see Peter's mother-in-law has been healed. Yes, and also we see that the people they brought the paralytic he was also healed beloved yes there is mighty power in the word of god so my dear brother my dear sister i would request you do take time and read the word of god whenever you get time at least give half an hour to read the bible and to pray for when we read the word of god we are hearing what god is speaking to us and when we pray we are speaking to god let it go hand in hand as we read in Isaiah 56, it says to us in verse 24, As we are yet speaking, he will hear, and as we pray, he will answer. Yes, beloved, he is the God of the living, not the dead, as we read in Luke chapter 20, verse 38. And all live to him. The words are true, beloved. Yes, the words are true as we read in Psalm 121. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is a shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Hallelujah. As we read in Mark chapter 5 verse 36, a very important point, it says, only believe. Fear not, only believe. The words are true. Yes, beloved, I am his witness and I want you also to only believe, yes, there is no fees required, no kind of any sacrifice required. We have to only believe in the living God, beloved, for he is the omnipotent God who reigns as we read in Revelation 19 verse 6. Yes, he is a salvation as we read in Revelation 7 verse 10 and Revelation 7 verse 17 says, he will wipe away our every tear. Yes, he will be a shepherd and he will lead us to the living waters. Yes, beloved, Jesus Christ is the living waters. As we read in John 4.10, and he is the light of the world, John 8.12. Yes, my dear sister, my dear brother, whatever is your request today, go and put it in the front of Lord Jesus Christ. As we read in Micah 7.7, 7, it says, I will look to the Lord, I will wait for him, and he will answer my prayer. The words are true, beloved, for the word is living and the word is spirit and the words are life as we read in John 6 verse 63. 
Hallelujah. Yes, the words are true. Yes. For every authority in heaven and earth belongs to him. As we read in Matthew chapter 28. Yes. And he is with us till the end of the age, beloved. The words are true. As we read in Matthew chapter 28. And as we read 365 times, it is written in the Bible. Fear thou not. Hallelujah. The words are true, beloved. As we read in Romans 8 verse 37. We are more than conquerors in all these things. The words are true, beloved. Yes. Yes. So be strengthened up and wear the armor of God as we read in Ephesians 6 verse 11. Yes. That is the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of Old Testament, New Testament, King James Version, Bible. Yes. The gospel of peace. Yes. That is the shoes or sandals of gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Yes. For Jesus Christ is knocking at the door of your heart and my heart. Let us wear, yes, the armor of God and also receive Lord Jesus Christ in our heart, in our house, for he will come and sup with us. And let him be the chief guest and also the captain of a ship that is life. Hallelujah. Yes, beloved, as we read in Hebrews chapter 13, it says, yes, as he is the same yesterday, today and forever. The word that we read, it is the living word, beloved. The miracles which happened 2000 years before. Yes, it will happen today, right now. Yes, for now is the time of salvation. Now is the time of Lord's favor. Yes, also be healed, my dear brother, my dear sister, in the name of Yahweh Rafeka. For with the wounds and the stripes that he suffered for us, he heals us. Isaiah 53, verse 5 is true. Hallelujah. The same power is here right now. And also the word says that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. The words are true as we read the mighty word from Yes, it is speaking in Isaiah 40. Yes, verse 8. Hallelujah. Yes, so be strengthened up. Yes, and also do not quit in life. You have to seize the day and be victorious in life. For the victory rests with the mighty God. As we read in Proverbs, it says in 21, 30, 31. Yes, the horse is made ready for the day of battle. But the victory rests with the mighty God. He's already gone ahead of you and me. And he's already sent us. The words are true. Judges 4.14. Judges 6.14. Whatever is our request today. Yes. For the freedom from the addiction. From the drugs. Or from poverty. The freedom. Every kind of bondages will be broken in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah. For the word says. Yes. He will deliver us. He will deliver us. The words are true as we read in Jeremiah chapter 39. The words are true beloved. Yes, he is our defense. As we read in Psalm 59, three times the word of here appears. It says he is a defense. Yes, he is a defense. Even my dear children, my dear youth, he will bless you with wisdom, for he is the fountain of wisdom. The words are true as we read in James 1 verse 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and abridgeth not. Hallelujah. My dear sister, he will bless you. Yes, for the word says he is the father of the fatherless and he is also Yes, the defender of the widows. Yes, and he will set the bound into prosperity. Hallelujah. His name is Yah, as we read in Psalm 68, verse 4, 5, 6. And we bless your name for your daily lotus with benefits. The words are true as we read in Psalm 68, verse 19. Hallelujah. The words are true which says there are 20,000 chariots for you and me as we read in Psalm 68, verse 18. Yes, beloved, be encouraged, be strong. Yes, for you are in this world, for God has a purpose, a plan. For nothing can stop what God has ordained for you. As we read the mighty word, it is speaking to you and to me. As we read in Isaiah, yes, chapter 24. Yes, the words are true, beloved. Yes, so be encouraged, my dear sister, my dear brother. And remember, the omnipotent God reigns. As we read in Revelation 19, verse 6. Hallelujah. Yes, beloved. So, do not quit in life. The words are true. Which says... All the purpose in my life is as per his appointment. The words are true as we read in Job 23, verse 14. Hallelujah. And he can do everything and none of his purpose can be withheld from him. As we read in Job 42, verse 2. Hallelujah. Yes, beloved. Every human being has a soul and the soul is asking, what is the truth? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. John 14, verse 6. And he will bless us abundantly. Remember that. As we read, in Psalm 38 verse 6, always say, Thy will be done. John 6 verse 38. Yes, be encouraged today and every day, my dear brother, my dear sister. As the word says in Deuteronomy 7, yes, verse 14 and 15, Thou shalt be blessed above all people, and thou shalt be free of all diseases. Hallelujah. Yes, 
be encouraged be strong and also read the word of god every day yes jesus christ will speak to you as we read in isaiah 14 verse 27 yes nothing can stop what god has ordained for you and every curse will be turned into a blessing as we read in deuteronomy 23 verse 5 yes all the blessings are true yes so arise and shine is the message for you and me as we read in isaiah 60 verse 1 do like and subscribe the channel arise and shine alfred rathout and family usa hallelujah this is dr mrs alfred james rathout speaking for the channel god bless you as we read in numbers yes chapter 6 verse 24 god bless you my dear brother my dear sister my dear children my dear youth yes be encouraged be blessed today and every day hallelujah god bless you amen amen hallelujah Amen.